En question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. En... The court is now back in session. And once again, the floor is given to the prosecution to continue presenting their closing statement. You may now continue. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Your Honours, we last left off discussing the pattern, the systematic pattern of killings of Khmer Republic officials, including soldiers, around the country in April 1975 to demonstrate the policy of the CPK to kill La politique these officials. I would now like to move beyond April 75 and firstly shortly beyond Je and look at the evidence après to après see if that policy continued and to look at the evidence to prove and to show that, that policy existed throughout the period. In fact, the policy to kill Khmer Republic officials from April 75 and before accelerated through the Democratic Kampuchea period as the CPK leaders' paranoia and obsession with eliminating perceived enemies became more extreme. An explicit piece of evidence that demonstrates this continued policy is a CPK military order that's been admitted at this trial. Military orders are powerful evidentiary documents. They are important because they Les evidence military structure, reporting, puissant, command and control, and of course the contents of the order and in some cases the identity of the victims et bien if sûr, it's an order to kill. The 4th of June 1975, six weeks after the evacuation, military order is confirmation of this continuing policy to kill former Khmer Republic officials. This order was issued by Comrade Pin, the commander of a special zone brigade seconded to the party center. The order was to execute 17 Khmer Republic military officers, and it stated that all these 17 persons have been examined by the party and the party has decided that they are to be smashed. It further states the comrades are asked to implement this policy of the party. Unquote. The policy of the party. The 4th of June, 1975. Your Honours, the authenticity of this order was confirmed by Yang Sari in his interview with Stephen Hedder. He also confirmed that the order required the Khmer Republic officers on the list to be smashed. Comrade Pin, the author of the order, later was appointed the secretary of Centre Division 703. Doik knew Pin very well and has described the conversations he had with Pin about the executions of officers and officials from the Khmer Republic. And I quote Doik. I know that after the 17th of April, 
soldiers were systematically eliminated. This was confirmed to me by Com Pin, that's K H O E M, Secretary Division 703, and by Hor, my deputy. After the liberation, soldiers were hunted down and fled. Doik also said that Com Pin told him about the liquidation of specific named generals, and I quote, Generals Chia Kim Eng and Chim Chon reported to him to surrender and were liquidated afterwards. Ho told me the same thing about General Deng La Yong, also adding that the general had displayed great courage. Rajoutant également que ce général avait fait preuve d'un courage. I would note, Your Honours, that the two generals identified by Doik, Chim Chun and Je Deng Ya Long, are both Chim on the list of the executed Khmer Republic officers that I previously discussed, the list that was published in Bangkok about a month later. Your Honours, the CPK, CPK policy to execute Khmer Republic soldiers and officials continued with full force and effect throughout the DK period. In the August 1975 revolutionary flag, it urged cadres to continue with their killings of this, the former Khmer Republic officials. And I quote, as for defending Phnom Penh and smashing espionage groups and smashing saboteurs, saboteurs that want to wreck and destroy a revolution, we will continue to smash the defeated enemy remnants to consolidate our victory. The minutes of a March 1976 Standing Committee meeting attended by Nguyen Chia and Kyu Sampan recorded that, and I quote, the entire feudalist regime has been permanently smashed, unquote. But, Your Honours, the killings continued unabated, particularly at S21, the notorious killing centre in Phnom Penh, and other security officers for which detailed records survive, cataloguing the arrest, detention, torture and killing of Khmer Republic officials. A news broadcast from May 1976 indicated that former Khmer Republic soldiers were still being executed in Batambang province. A July 1976 news report described the executions of 350 Khmer Republic soldiers who were machine gunned en masse upon their return from Thailand. A March 1978 telegram from the North Zone Secretary to Committee 870 advises that, and I quote, in the dry season, the remained enemies re-emerged. We systematically purged them. Right now, some policemen, soldiers and government officials escaped after more than 20 people were purged. More actions will be taken to arrest more people." Unquote. So, Your Honours, the evidence certainly proves that Khmer Republic personnel were killed all over Cambodia, in jungles, in fields, in houses, in ditches, everywhere they could be found. Based on his extensive interviews with refugees, most from the northwest zone who crossed the Thai border, but many from other areas. Francois Ponchot confirmed, and I quote, the accounts in question seem credible. They also confirm what was said about the massacres of civil servants 
and military personnel from the long Nol regime throughout the country. Unquote. Ce qui a été dit concernant le massacre There was a consistent pattern, Your Honours, of luring large numbers of victims to their deaths Il with false promises and deceit. Par lequel un grand Killings de occurred ont été after a consistent scheme of recording biographies and segregating victims. Et par des ruses qui ont the executions were planned and organized even down to the smallest detail. The apparatus and segregation and transportation, which started at the Ministry of Information at the Monorom Hotel, was mirrored all over the country. The CPK prided itself on its centralized and hierarchical authority structure and the high level of discipline amongst its forces. De commandement hiérarchisé et Nuanchia was not under any pressure Nuanchia when he admitted that the top leadership of the Khmer Republic regime, regime was, and I quote, liquidated. Liquidé, unquote. Pursuant to orders from the political leadership of the CPK. This is a highly damaging admission by him. Extrêmement accablant. Equally, Q Sampan cannot hide from his order to kill the seven super traitors, nor the tone and content of the 21st of April 1975 congratulatory speech. We submit that the evidence leads you to one and only one conclusion that the killing of Khmer Republic officials that took place throughout the territory of Cambodia before, on, and following the 17th of April 1975 was carried out pursuant to orders of the party center. Le produit d'ordre émanant du centre du parti. Your Honours, if I can move Mesdames, les juges, to the evidence that proves the killings of at least hundreds of Lonnol soldiers and civil servants at Tulpo Trey in Passat province de in April 1975. This is another event that these accused are specifically charged with. Your Honours, the evidence shows that these Les killings occurred shortly after the CPK took control in Passat. Passat. The massacre of these men, as Le you know, Your Honours, was not an isolated event. Pas un événement isolé. It was not an act of revenge. Ni un acte de revanche. It was not an act Ni caused by a rogue CPK zone leader chef de zone acting under his own authority. It was an event embedded autorité. within a nationwide policy, Cet the son CPK policy dans une to kill former Khmer Republic officials and soldiers, which I have just politique submitted. Par laquelle le PCK entendait it was one massacre of many. It was a link de in a chain of events. Comme je it was ordered from the top un by the party center. Your Honours, although the three witnesses, Lim Sat, Ung Chat, certes, and Summer Lat, les trois témoins, who were called at trial, Chat, did not personally observe Alat, the killing of Tulpo Trey, ici, they provided key evidence as how these killings were planned, organized, and managed. I will briefly recount their testimony as it demonstrates how and why this massacre took place. You will remember the testimony of Lim Sat, who testified that a few days after the liberation of Phnom Penh, he attended a meeting where the zone committee 
ordered Souvenez-vous de la déposition de He said the CPK were afraid Il a dit que quelques jours après la libération de Phnom Penh, il them. avait assisté à une réunion où le comité de He zone avait ordonné des gathered policemen and soldiers of the Khmer Republic administration que le at a meeting at the provincial hall in Persat. At the meeting, the attendees were advised that they would be sent to, to a study session. He testified that immediately after this, the police and soldiers were taken to Tupotre, where they were executed. Lim Sat testified that his role was to guard the main road connecting the town of Persat to Tupotre. Les policiers et les soldats the execution route à tout le for the former Khmer Republic personnel. Lim Sat a dit Here, qu'il avait pour rôle de monter Lim la garde Sat sur la route principale reliant la ville de civilian trucks. à Take Soit Lon Nol soldiers le, le, to the meeting at the provincial hall. Le personnel de la public maire, Each truck held about 30 people. À cet endroit, Lim Sat a vu that same day He saw at least 15 of the trucks transporting the Khmer Republic soldiers and officials to Tulpotray, two trucks at a time. He testified that there are about 50 to 60 Khmer Rouge soldiers at Tulpotray, and that he was informed via radio that the soldiers and police taken to that site had been killed. He testified to hearing gunshots in the background during the radio communications with the CPK soldiers at Tulpotray. When the trucks came back on the same road towards the town of Passat, he said they were empty. After some trucks had left, Lim Sat was ordered by radio to release more trucks to go to the killing site. So, while it's true that Lim Sat did not see the killings with his own eyes, is there any doubt from his testimony that truckloads of Khmer Republic soldiers and officials were taken to Tulpo Trey and killed? Simply put, Your Honours, the only reasonable conclusion that can be reached based on the facts testified to by Lim Sat is that many hundreds of victims were killed by the CPK that day at Tulpotre. And Lim Sat, of course, is not the only witness to these seule conclusion possible sur la base des faits. You also heard the testimony of Hung Chat, who was assigned as a guard outside the meeting. Et bien entendu, where he testified that high-level Khmer Rouge leaders were in attendance. At the meeting, which lasts about three to four hours, he said the former Khmer Republic civil Selon and military lui, servants were told by the CPK leaders that they would be taken to a reception or a study heures. session. On a dit aux anciens Hung Chat's testimony is corroborated by one of the truck drivers who transported the Lon officials and soldiers to their death and who was in interviewed by Tet Sambat in his tool portray film. That driver on that video stated he knew about the plan to kill these people, explaining that the passengers on his truck had been deceived and thought they were going to meet the prince. Lastly, Your Honours, you heard the testimony of Sam Alat, enfin, a Lon Nol soldier who testified that he was present at a meeting where Khmer Republic soldiers were told they would be taken to Tulpo Trey for a reception with Ankar. Fortunately for Sam Alat, the trucks were so crowded with others from the meeting that he could not climb on. So although some of the details contained in the testimony of these three witnesses may have differed, the core events relating to the deaths on a mass scale 
les morts of the former centraux, officials and soldiers savoir, are well established la by the testimonies combined. <coughs> Proof as to the exact method si and manner of death de comes from eyewitnesses and physical remains left at the execution site. The personnel were executed en masse with no ability to defend themselves. Their hands were bound. They were tied together in groups and shot. Et il y a TCW 644 stated to court investigators that he went to the execution site the day after the killings in April 1975. And he saw bodies with gunshot wounds to the head and torso. He stated the victims were tied together by rope with their hands tied behind their back. Ong Chat testified that he was told by villagers that the corpses were bound by the, at the arms and tied in groups of 15 to 20. A Khmer Rouge cadre on Tet Sambat's video, who was present at the killing site, he stated that when the Khmer Republic officials got off the trucks, they were told their arms would be tied because they were meeting the prince and were not fully trusted yet. Dans le film de Sambat, he stated, after being tied up, they were taken behind the raised bank place, of a nearby a pond and killed. Another CPK soldier camion, in the same video dit also confirms that the victims were tied up before being killed. One of the cadres in the video demonstrates how the victims' hands were tied together, 20 bodies per piece of rope. As to the actual proof of death of the firm, former soldiers and officials killed at Tupo Tre in April 1975, that proof is significant. A local farmer in the Tet Sambat video, stated that the morning after the executions, he saw the bodies, describing them as stiff, with sounds of decomposition emanating from them. Another witness on the video stated that shortly after the killings, he saw the bodies bubbling like molten tarmac. A local ox cart driver gave evidence to court investigators at E3534 that about a month after the killings, he saw traces of excavators that had buried all the corpses. TCW 699 visited Tulpo Trey after January 1979 and saw piles of human remains une with Khmer Republic army uniforms sur place next to four or five big pits that had been dug up. Another witness who gave the OCIJ statement E35500 went to Tulpo Trey and saw many body bones sticking out of mounds of earth. Your Honours, even 35 years later, OCIJ investigators were able to find at this site bone fragments, fired cartridge casings, a bullet head, metal artifacts such as belt buckles, zippers, and the presence of clothing in the soil. These cartridge cases were found in and around the burial pits. Même 35 ans plus tard, les enquêteurs du BCJI ont pu Honours, retrouver sur place des fragments de portrait. The testimony of three witnesses heard by this chamber establishes that between 200 and 500 people were transported by trucks from the Passat Provincial Hall to Tulpo Trey that day. 
et il a vu des morceaux de tissu évidence, qui étaient honest, mêlés à la terre. Ces douilles ont également TCW été trouvées dans les sols et à proximité. Quant au nombre de personnes tuées à tout le potier en avril 1975, TCW 699 a dit que le pont de Tulle par camion était plein de corps. Estimating that there were approximately Il y a d'autres pièces dont sont saisies les CPK cadre et qui donnent à penser qu'il y a eu bien plus de victimes. Interviewed le témoin de le 144 a dit avoir vu stated that there were nearly 10,000 people killed in Tulle que l'étang situé près de toulouse potre était plein de corps, estimant qu'il y en avait environ 5 000. Le cadre du PCK a été was done by the ECC investigators. When they visited the massacre site during the judicial investigation, the comprehensive report corroborates the testimony of the witnesses that such a pond existed and it was of a size that would hold thousands of bodies. This slide is a photo from the report that shows the pond where the Khmer Republic officials were killed and their bodies disposed. The next slide is a detailed map from the crime scene report showing the pond which is seen by the GPS points forming a circle at point three on the map. You can also see at points four and point five the route in which the trucks took to get to that pond before they were executed. Your Honours, the crime scene investigators were left in no doubt from their examination of the execution site that the location identified to them was in fact the site of the mass execution. They in fact concluded that after interviewing witnesses and examining the site, I quote, the Office of the Co-Investigating Judges has not found any evidence so far that any event of a similar magnitude happened after the killing in 1975 at the particular site of Tulpo Train." Your Honours, the exact number of deaths that occurred at Tulpo Train on that day in April 1975, will never be known. What is known, however, and what has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, is that hundreds of Khmer Republic personnel, truckloads of victims, were taken to Tulpa Tray and killed in April 1975. Your Honours, I've made a number of references to the video One Day at Potray, which was produced by Tet Sambat. This video corroborates the trial testimonies heard by this chamber and the statements given to the ECC investigators. To finish, we would like to play a short eight-minute clip from the film to demonstrate the powerful corroborative nature of this evidence to the trial testimony, witness statements and other evidence before you. Your Honours, the video will take about eight minutes. Cet extrait dure environ huit minutes. At that time, everyone, all the royal soldiers wanted to see the prince because they wanted to get promotion. promotion. So the one who was not an officer also bought the officer's stripe. This is what I want to say, that's why a lot of officiers. people died. Some people were not the real soldiers, soldiers, but they bought the officer's Certains stripes from the market. Vraiment des soldats. There were plenty of officer's stripes marché. selling in the market at the corner of the Poussat River. Beaucoup along de galons the corner officiers étaient of the market, they were selling the officer's stripes all along the way. During the incident, they still sell the officer's stripes until the third day when money was abolished that they stopped selling it.
des galons. Ce n'est que le troisième jour qu'ils ont arrêté de vendre ces galons lorsque la monnaie a été abolie. Le soir, au cours d'une réunion, on nous a dit que nous devions nous réveiller à 4h du matin et nous rassembler pour attaquer le Pochrei. Nous nous sommes réveillés à 4h du matin. Everyone was there Tout le monde était là, nous track. sommes montés dans le camion. We traveled from nous avons quitté Poursat pour arriver à Tulpochrei à, à l'aube. À ce moment, le commandant Clem a annoncé from the par haut-parleur depuis la sentinelle qu'il fallait unit. préparer les soldats de notre unité. And local units 18th and 19th, almost a thousand soldiers to cordon. Il y avait près de 1000 soldats à encercler avec l'unité 18 et 19. Notre groupe était nommé unité de prévention unit, on nous a dit que si Certains prenaient la fuite. Notre groupe à nous devait tout faire pour les rattraper. C'est de quoi le plan est échoué. Vers 7 heures, nous avons entendu le bruit des camions qui arrivaient, à commencer par le plus grand. Ils ont dit que l'unité spéciale devait être prête. Le troisième jour, ils ont conduit les gens à tout le poitrine. Nous étions déjà au du fait que ces gens étaient allés pour être tués. C'étaient des gens importants. Ils ont dit qu'ils allaient juste aller pour un peu de nuit, au moins. Ils pensaient qu'ils partaient uniquement pour quelques jours. Ils croyaient qu'après avoir montré le prince, ils retrouveraient leur ancien poste. C'est ce qu'ils disaient, ils n'avaient aucune crainte. Ils se taquinaient. En demandant, qu'est-ce que tu emmenais avec toi Ils étaient en civil. Le gouverneur provincial était vêtu de blanc, il portait un chapeau de paille. Ces gens essayaient d'avoir l'air ordinaire. Parce que les Khmer Rouges étaient vêtus de noir, ils avaient un cramin autour du cou. So et donc, ils essayaient d'avoir like l'air de paysans. They were like an ordinary with a straw head. Ils étaient True. habillés de façon ordinaire, they make également fun avec in un the chapeau de paille. Dans le camion, ils plaisantaient pour détendre l'atmosphère. Like Comme si future. rien de particulier ne se préparait. Une fois descendus du train, il a été annoncé Camarades, ce qui suit. Camarades, n'ayez pas peur. You come to meet vous êtes venus rencontrer Lanka, non pas parce que Lanka ne vous fait pas confiance, mais so vous, vous allez rencontrer le prince. C'est pourquoi nous up. devons vous ligoter. After they were tied Après up, all the people in the traps, avoir ligoté tous les passagers away. du camion, ils ont été... It was like this. Emmenés à l'écart. Ils ont down. abattu ces gens les uns après les autres. Ils se sont écroulés un par un. The brain was scattered. The white brains mixed Leur up with the red blood. cerveau which looked so horrendous. They did not shoot them in the open. Seen Le blanc du cerveau se mélangeait. Au Only rouge in du sang, c'est un spectacle affreux. Ils ne pouvaient pas faire cela ouvertement, car les passagers du camion en seraient témoins. Ce n'est que près de l'étang qu'ils pouvaient le faire sans témoin. Some of them even shouted out, cursing your godless devils, your animals. As soon as they saw the dead bodies, they started to Certains curse. se sont mis à crier, But others were par down exemple, and could not even walk. espèce d'impie animal. When I come here, I feel Dès qu'ils ont vu les cadavres, ils ont commencé à right jurer et prononcer des malédictions. D'autres étaient sidérés, incapables de marcher.
At first they wanted to hide all of them in a pond, but départ, it was not big enough. Ils voulaient tous les mettre dans l'étang, mais il n'était pas assez grand. First they asked them to kneel down and face their direction. Some shredded by the bullets, it was hard to watch. De the stench of blood was too strong that could not stand it, so I moved away. It was better if you were on the upwind. Il était mieux de ne pas être dans le sens du vent. In the Did you walk along here? In the morning, the corpses were only in the pond. And then... Êtes-vous passé par ici, le matin? And when I walk at 4 p.m., there were corpses scattered everywhere. À 4 heures de l'après-midi, il y avait des corps partout. East, south, scattered the corpses all the places. Des corps partout. I walk south by the fence when they pack, where Je they pass the trap. Je suis passé près de la clôture. So did you wanted to walk this way? Est-ce que vous vouliez passer par là? This was covered with all the corpses, so so I could not walk. Il y avait des corps so partout. I walked Je ne pouvais donc pas passer. I walked that direction instead to rejoin my unit. Et j'ai rejoint mon unité. I asked the unit and three, the one who shot those people, that how many soldiers tri, were killed there. He told me there were nearly 10,000. How many bodies did you combien see de here? Corps avez -vous vu? A lot. There were a lot Beaucoup. that I can't say exactly. Je ne peux pas dire exactement combien. But I asked Tabol, who did the killing, parlé à Tabol, who was assigned in the special unit. Il partie unité I asked how many people Bol, he said, il y en avait. Il a dit, there were some 10,000 or maybe only 1,000 less than 10,000. Please speak louder. Whom did you ask à qui after the shooting? La question après ces exécutions? I did not ask at the shooting place, but I asked him when we were back place, at the canteen for lunch after we transferred back to the province. Une fois I asked Bol, how many dead scenes it scattered everywhere, and I was outside, so I could not see. And he said, I was outside, I saw nothing. And he said, according to what he did, at least 8,000. Maybe avait... only 1,000 less than 10,000. Peut-être entre 1,000 et 10,000. <coughs> Mr. President, Your Honours, we submit Monsieur the evidence Président, before you pour nous, in relation to the extermination and murder of former L'épreuve dont vous êtes saisi concernant l'extermination des anciens soldats you have trial de testimony establishing the key facts and events accablantes. relating to the murders, witness statements providing further specific details, corroborative forensic evidence from the court investigators. In addition, Ces preuves you sont have compelling accounts Il y a of these events from the actual Khmer Rouge cadres involved in the killings who admitted the commission of these crimes in the one day at Potray video. Your Honours, the evidence also proves the executions at Tung Potray Et qui le reconnaissent in April 1975, were committed pursuant to a policy of the CPK leadership that targeted former Khmer Republic officials and soldiers. Lim Sat specifically testified that his regiment commander told him the order to execute the Tulpo Trey, the Tulpo Trey victims, was issued, and I quote, because they're afraid these policemen and soldiers would revolt against the Khmer Rouge, unquote. This was exactly the reason Yang Sari a member of the Standing Committee gave to Steve Hedder for this policy, and I quote again, that they, the CPK leadership, decided to do whatever was required 
to les dirigeants du PCK ont décidé de faire tout ce qui était nécessaire pour empêcher ce groupe de surgir et de s'opposer à la révolution. Kusampan himself has stated in a prior interview that the CPK leadership feared that, I quote, remnants from the Lonnol army throughout Phnom Penh and the countryside, unquote, might be involved in a rebellion. Les survivants de l'armée de Lonnol à Phnom Penh et Your honors, the killings at Tulpo Trey were not isolated acts of revenge, as argued by the Nguyen defense, nor were they the crimes of an autonomous warlord who ruled the northwest zone. The executions at Tulpo Trey, like the similar executions that took place at other locations across Cambodia, were the results of decisions made and policies established by the party centre leaders. Your Honours, if, uh, if we can pause for a moment, I would like to Mesdames move juges, the prosecution's submissions away from proving the criminal policies of the CPK, away from proving the crimes that resulted from those policies, des de and towards la the issue criminelle of Nguyen and Q-Sampan's responsibility for them. Their individual criminal responsibility for the criminal policies and crimes which are charged in this trial. Your Honours, the evidence shows that behind the charm and smile of Pol Pot were the minds of a small group of men, Pot, including Nguyen Chia and Kyu Sampan, who were prepared to do whatever it took to realise their radical vision of their Cambodia. Nguyen Chia and Kyu Sampan and their criminal partners were the masters and the Cambodian population were their slaves. They were dictators who controlled Cambodians by brutal force and fear. Tragically, their act of stripping a population of all of its humanity by the abuse of a power of power of a few has not been a first in world history. Totalitarian dictatorships through the ages have used people as tools to enable them to gain and maintain absolute power and absolute control. They do so in order that their vision and only their vision can be realized. Nguyen Chia and Kyu Sampan killed for power. They spilt blood for it. They brutalized and dehumanized their own people and kept spilling blood for power. There is nothing beautiful about this blood. It represents agony, anguish, fear and death. It tells us of victims shot, bludgeoned, tortured, starved, and worked to their death, often in unimaginable 
pain. De faim ou de surmenage. It marks the loss of meaning in life. Il symbolise la vie It represents the ever aching hearts Il of Cambodians. Les cœurs of Cambodian parents des who never saw their children grow. Qui pas pu voir leurs the ever aching hearts of Cambodians whose les mothers, brisés, fathers, de husbands, dans les mères, wives, les pères, boyfriends, les femmes, girlfriends, brothers les and amis, sisters that never came home. This blood they spilt also represents the ugliness, the obscenity, and the inhumanity of the act of killing another human being. It represents the work of the killers. The young men ordered to kill their neighbors. The blindfolding of victims, the tying up of their hands, the digging of pits, the beating of bodies, the smashing of skulls, the burying and the cleaning up. The work of butchers Nettoyer. human butchers. De bourreau, this de blood bûcher, is bad blood humain. and cannot be the standard sens, by which we live. Et ne peut constituer les normes qui When you torture someone to death, you have to get close enough to your victim to inflict pain. But although that closeness allows you to kill, you also see the eyes of the victim, the fear in the face, and the disbelief as to what is happening to them. When you prepare a victim for death, you see their eyes. When another human begs you for their life, you see their eyes. When you wield a club, a bar, and hold it high above your head, you see their eyes. Seeing your victim's eyes makes it hard to kill. As if you look close enough, you see yourself. You see your own humanity in their eyes. Nguyen Chia and Q San Pan chose not to see the eyes of their victims. They chose not to see their own humanity. This made it easier for them more humane for them donc plus by urging, pour eux, persuading, plus humain, and ordering others to do the work of killing. Et if aux they saw their victims' eyes, they may not have pulled the trigger, vu les yeux swung de leur the victime, axe, ils tied them up, or dug the pit. Sur la so they got others to do their work. Their very dirty work. They contracted out the inhumanity of their work so they could feel more humane. All for their vision, their unrelenting, unforgiving vision of creating a society that they wanted. They used Cambodians to kill Cambodians. They used Khmer to kill Khmer. They played with Cambodians' minds and their bodies. 
Ils ont joué avec les esprits. They played with avec them Cambodia. like pawns on a chessboard, causing many to Jouer kill comme des pions and millions to die. Whether you would kill or be effet, killed, de they would decide. Des millions sont morts. Your Honours, a man who we will now see on the video reminds us of the tragedy, the anguish and the pain of one victim and the barbaric and savage nature of the work of her killer. He reminds us of the loss of our humanity and how it can happen. He makes us think, think, where should the blame for these tragic killings really lie? You can play the video, please. Can you recall what this woman has asked you? Rappelez-vous ce que cette femme vous a dit? She had a small, thin face. Elle avait un petit visage maigre. It was small but long. Son visage était petit Her mais Her complexion allongé. was white. Sa peau était blanche. She was pretty. Elle était jolie. She was a seamstress. She stayed indoor, so her complexion was better than ours, who worked in the fields. She worked indoors, and she looked beautiful. Yes. Uh, she was in the last batch to be sent. She grabbed my legs, screaming and asking me, Uncle, I beg you, please let me live with you. Then I said, how can I let you live with me? Because you were, you are about to be, and you can't uh, stay with me. She said, please, please, whatever happened, please just let me live with you. Then I said, will you live with me for the whole life? If you just stayed here for half of your life, you are not allowed. Then she said, yes, I will stay with you for my whole life. She raised her hand like this and hugged my knees and insulted to me. You, you, what are you waiting for? Start doing your job now. Then I started doing it. I do not like it, but uh, I, uh, I, I did it. And by pushing her down to the ditch, yes, it was a trailer from Bat uh, a tailor from Battenbong at that time. When I got home, I had to wash my hands thoroughly. I ate a little rice, then I stopped. I smelled my hand and the smell of blood. At the killing side, the stench of the blood was terrible. It was worse than the beef or beef flesh, it was, but we had to get on with it. Mr. President, Your Honours, the blame for the death of that young girl lies with Nguyen Chia and Kusampan and the other CPK party centre leaders. It is clear in this trial they are only charged with the killings arising out of the forced transfers and the killings at Tulpo Trey. But it's not clear if this young girl's death arose out of that. What is clear is that for the killings and inhumane treatment for which they are charged in this trial, they are to blame. Blame because they created the killers 
through their policies, their orders, their indoctrination and their training to blame for without their criminal plans, that girl begging for her life and millions like her could be alive today. Mr. President, I would now like to move to the evidence to show you why both Nguyen Chia and Q Sampan are to blame, why they are legally responsible for the crimes charged in the indictment. Mr. President, it perhaps would be a natural break to break here, or alternatively, I can keep, keep going. I will continue. The President. Well, you may uh, move on to the new uh, portion of your statement. Uh, of course, you are uh, located uh, with three days for this uh, final uh, statement. Uh, but yesterday, you have already used uh, your time allocated. Uh, so uh, I suggest hier, that you uh, proceed uh, now so that um, you will save uh, the time for your subsequent uh, statement. Que vous ayez le temps Thank you, Mr. President. Présenter. And to understand Merci, how Nguyen Chia and Q Sampan participated in this crime, these crimes, it necessitates an understanding of how they agreed to the criminal policies of the CPK, how power and authority was exercised in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and what roles they had within the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and finally, how they individually contributed to these criminal policies and crimes. I will address the evidence relating to these issues under three broad headings. First, the collective leadership, guiding principles, structure and communication of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, the role and character of the accused, and finally, their contribution to the criminal policies and crimes charged in this trial. Your Honours, the evidence you have heard over the past two years has proven the role of Nguyen Chia and Q Sampan, a small group of leaders of the CPK, who formed what was known as the Party Centre. The evidence has shown that Nguyen Chia, Q Sampan, Pol Pot, Yang Sari and Sun Sen lived and worked together, that they made decisions together on a collective basis, and that through a hierarchical command structure, and strict regime of reporting from the bottom to the top, they exercise complete totalitarian uh, control over all of democratic Kampuchea. Every zone, sector, ministry and military division reported to the party centre. And every single aspect of life of the people of democratic Kampuchea was controlled by the party leaders. Where you lived, what you did for work, who you could marry, what you could eat, what you could say, and even what you could think and believe. Democratic Kampuchea was a slave state, and its masters were the leaders who ruled over the country from the K-1 and K-3 officers in Phnom Penh. In our opening remarks back in November 2011, the co-prosecutors discussed extensively the role of the party centre. Your Honours may recall when it was Q Sampan turned to respond to our opening statement. He accused us of making up the term party centre. We would like to quote him exactly and play a video from the courtroom on the 23rd of November 2011, 
une vidéo when filmée dans Sam ce le 23 novembre 2011, lorsque about the prosecution's use of the term les commentaires party suivants sur euh, l'emploi par l'accusation du terme « centre du parti ». I have noticed that the co-prosecutor has invented the word "center the party." A inventé le terme "centre du parti." I have heard it since Monday and Tuesday. I am concerned that. You are using these words in order to distinguish clearly between the central party and standing committee because this disturbs you. However, at that time, there was a clear distinction between the two. À l'époque, il existait une distinction claire. Therefore, you want to have the public believe that everyone is like one rotten fish in the basket. Que tout le monde But était it is dans le même panier a lie, pourri. an exaggeration of the fact. C'est un mensonge. Vous exagérez les faits. I apologise, Your Honours. The evidence in this trial has conclusively proven that it was not the co-prosecutors, but rather Q. Sam Pan, who has attempted to deceive this court. You have now seen many contemporaneous documents from the DK era that expressly refer to the party centre, Mochim Park. We have identified numerous references to the party center in the revolutionary flag and other CPK publications by this chamber. To give you just a few examples, a speech that was given by Nguyen Chia on the occasion of the ninth anniversary of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea and published in the December 1976, January 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag, they used the term party, seven, party center 11 times. In the April 1978 issue of Revolutionary Flag announced that the party center had discussed and decide, decided that rice yields of 8 tonnes per hectare could be, and I quote, fully done with 10 to 15 years throughout the country. Stephen Hedder testified that the reference in the revolutionary flag to a June 1974 meeting that decided to mount the decisive offensive to liberate Phnom Penh was to a conference of the party centre. And a CPK circular titled What is the Anchor's Ideology and Party Discipline, it summarizes the CPK hierarchy and organizational principles as follows, and I quote, the individual must respect and comply with the organization, the lower echelon respects the upper echelon, the entire party respects the party center. Witnesses we have heard in this trial also have referred to, described and identified the group known 
as the party centre. Pol Pot's nephew, Salafan, described Q Sampan as a member of the party centre. Yan Kim, a long-time CPK commune chief, in Krache, who attended a meeting at which Nguyen Chia provided instructions on the implementation of cooperatives, testified that Nguyen Chia was with the party centre, so he was at the supreme leadership level of the CPK. Both Song Sukun and Nong Sapang described Office 870 as the party centre office. In his book, Voices from S21, David Chandler wrote that the collective leadership was known to outsiders as the upper organisation, Ankar the organisation, Ankar, or the upper brothers, Bong Kang Lu, but was known to members of the CPK as the party centre. Chandler also testified during this trial that the party centre included both Nguyen Chia and Q Sampan. In an interview, Nguyen Chia gave to a Japanese journalist in October 2006, Nguyen Chia was asked who decided to evacuate the people from the cities, and his response was the party centre. So, Your Honours, the party centre was most certainly not a term invented by the prosecution. It was a very real group of men who ruled Democratic Kampuchea, two of whom are sitting in this courtroom, or one down below. It is not surprising, however, that Q Sampan feels uncomfortable whenever discussing terms like the party centre, for it is this group that is true power and role can be seen. For the evidence has proven that Q Sampan was one of the very few CPK leaders trusted by Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia, who allowed him to be by their side at all times. In the words of his own wife, who he brought to this court to testify on his behalf, Q Sampan and the other top leaders of the party were, I quote, close to one another constantly, unquote. During the war years of 1972 to 1975. This brings us to another remarkable lie that was delivered by Q Sampan in this courtroom. On the 30th of May 2013, in response to a question posed to him by a civil party, Q Sampan denied that he was a leader of the DK regime and claimed that he had joined the Khmer Rouge virtually by, by accident. Q Sampan, who continues to cling to an image of himself as a person of integrity and honesty, asked this court and the public to believe that he joined the Khmer Rouge by accident. But Q Sampan was neither an accidental or reluctant member of this organisation. Whatever it was that led him to the Marquis and the CPK territory in 1967, Q Sampan seemed to like it there. He didn't stay just a week or a month or a year. Q Sampan stayed with the Khmer Rouge and willingly, willingly served as one of its top leaders and the public face of the party for nearly 30 years, defending its murderous policies and advancing its agenda. Your Honours, throughout, just one more paragraph if I can. Your Honours, throughout my closing argument, 
Mesdames, Messieurs les juges, durant toutes mes réceptions of the accused, finales, j'aborderai les mensonges, les affaires de l'accusé, parce que leurs histoires parlent en volumes sur eux, car ces mensonges en disent long sur les accusés. Ces mensonges trahissent leur conscience coupable et font apparaître leur nature réelle. Denying their roles, knowledge, and involvement in these crimes, not willing to have their stories tested, when the time came to face questioning from the chamber, the prosecutors, and counsel for the civil parties, Mr. President, probably a natural break there. Il était question qu'il soit interrogé par la Chambre, les coprocureurs et les avocats des partis civils. Le Président, le temps est maintenant approprié pour lunch adjournement. Le moment est venu de suspendre l'audience pour la pause déjeuner. Et on résume à 1h15 aujourd'hui. L'audience reprendra à 13h15. C'est l'information pour parties to the proceeding and members of the public who are observing uh, the proceeding. Security guards are instructed to uh, bring the accused uh, to the holding cell uh, downstairs and uh, have them return to this courtroom before 1.30.